This flywheel is wobbly. Do you think I can turn it straighter after only having one day of experience in my whole life turning metal? Let's find out. Before we begin this video, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the format of this video. I am a total beginner on metal turning. I've never done it before in my life, but what I want to do with this video is that I want to show you almost every single step I made in this whole process. So you can kind of get the experience of how a total beginner approach a turning, a lathing project. If you want to see good turning, you should not watch this channel. If you want to take part of a beginner trying to learn to turn, this is the video for you. Welcome to day seven of the flywheel prototype build. And today I'm going to address the wobbliness of the flywheel. For the prototype, I wanted different flywheel settings. So this wheel actually consists of three independent plates. But during the week now, I figured out that I never want less weight than this, which allows me to weld these plates together and then turn them more true on the lathe. But first, let's check out exactly how wobbly this flywheel actually is. So we can visibly see that the wheel is wobbling, but to measure exactly how much it wobbles, we're using this dial indicator. If I push this pin inwards, the dial goes clockwise. And one full revolution is one full millimeter. If I start with the pin pressed in and release it, the dial goes counterclockwise. Now I can turn this to line up the zero with the arm, like that. Now by turning the flywheel, I can find the highest spot, which means when the flywheel wobbles the most to the left in the image. So here it goes to the left and it's going to turn around somewhere. It's very wobbly now. Slowing down there. Okay, there's the highest spot. So now we can spin the wheel again and it goes lower. And there we have one millimeter, two, three, 3.9 millimeter, which is a huge run out. This wheel is very wobbly. I will replace this entire wheel with our other wheel, this one. Since I no longer need to take the individual metal parts apart, I can weld them together so they become one solid lump of metal. I'm now going to weld the outside, and to do that, Carlos and Hannes is helping me building a rotary welding jig. With the welds in, I can remove the bolts and we get access to turn all the sides of the wheel, which in theory would help a lot with wobbliness. These kind of sheet metal stock are not really created to be super flat. Turning the wheel through should make a big difference. Disc has entered the metal shop and we have prepared the lathe for lifting the disc up and entering into the jaws. And I have my two strong friends here who is going to do that lift. <laughs> Disc is on. And now we have to clamp it from the side with the chuck jaws. First, I'm going to rough dial in the surface. So I'm using this dial indicator here and I'm looking for the high spot, which I think we just found. That whack ended up in like a tenth of a millimeter shift. So now we check again. I'm gonna look for the high spot. It's already better. I made it better, which is good. Let's give that a whack. Clear. Do that. So that is really good, 0.2 millimeter run out. I'm actually going to leave it at that now because that was 
rough dialing of the face. So now I'm going to indicate the plate radially, so in this direction. And when I tighten here, you can see that little movement means that we have put the disc a little bit more towards center. I think I have it as close as I need to take it. These laser cut plates are not completely circular. So if we check the dial indicator, we are now at a radial run out of 800 of a millimeter. This is a really cool way to mount tools. So it can go in any angle like this. And for this, I want this zero degrees. And then I can just slip into the tool holder like so. So now we're going to check the height adjustment, how high the tool should be. And for that, we're using this little knob. To set the height, we can use the tailstock to find the center. So I'm going backwards towards the tailstock. And now I can visually align it here. So Right now you can see it's too low, I'm raising it up. And this tool holder is now loose and you lock it down here. In this direction, I'm going to use this wheel to go in and out, and then to set the cut depth, I'm using this wheel. So counterclockwise, the whole disc moves towards me, which means a deeper cut. We have not found a positive stop on the machine, so what Jeremias did is was just to place some wood right here, which means that this side crashes into the wood before the machine crashes into the wheel. So if I go this direction, I come up to the wood and I feel that, before I make contact. So next, I'm gonna remove this. No gloves, no arms for safety. And then there's safety glasses, but no ear protection, because you wanna hear how the machine sounds and the lathing uh, turning is not too loud anyway. We had the power turned off as a safety when I was working on it. I can press here to just see if we're under power. <laughs> yes, we are. Time has come for a cut. And here we go. So I'm going through the whole piece. Right. A little bit more to the left. Going slow if we touch something. Yeah, I feel something. So here we go. We have started the cutting and it looks good. I'm going very careful. And I don't think we need to measure this yet. Okay, we are actually getting closer. 39.25. I went slower on this cut and the finish is much better. So we're aiming for just under 42. We're at 40, so we have two millimeters more to go. We are at 40.38. The taper bushing is not going in, but almost. So I'm just going to do the same cut again without changing settings. This might be it. And there we go. 
Okay, first operation is actually a success. Turns out it's dinner time already and I've been really focused the whole day on doing everything safely and securely. So I actually won't be able to finish the job today. Welcome to day eight of the flywheel. We're doing a powered cut for the first time ever. So the machine is doing it automatically. We're face cutting the whole flywheel. In the first face cut, we touched only up here. The surface looks really, really nice, but now I want to set it up so I only have to make one single more cut for the whole face. To set the depth of the final cut, I'm gonna check out here where we have machined. I'm gonna zero this like that. And then I'm gonna search for the lowest spot on the plate. Then I know how much material we need to take away. So a tenth of a millimeter, two tenths of a millimeter here. I'm gonna back away this way. So I backed away half a millimeter and now I can move out of the workpiece like that. And now I can back into the workpiece this way. 0 0.35 depth of cut, tenth of a millimeter, two tenth, three tenth, there. And we're ready to cut. I'm actually not ready to cut. I'm gonna make a trial run with the automatic feed in the air first. So I know that all the settings are correct. When I push this this way, the machine should start moving that way. Yes. Two days of uh, turning experience. Wish me luck. Here we go. It's really hot on the outside. This looks great. Yes, it's cutting well. You saw the sparks in the beginning. That's when it goes a little bit too hot. But I was just on the outside rim. I think we nailed the speed. This is so much fun. I'll stop the rotation. Wow. It is not like a perfectly continuous surface because the speed out here is much faster than the speed in here. Modern lathe speeds up when the tools comes into the ID. Now I want to turn the outside of the wheel, the OD, so I need to change the setup with the tool a bit. We can still see some low spots from the weld, so let's take 0.2 millimeters. 
This time I'm going to engage the automatic feed. I think we're all set up. Start the machine. Start the feed. Yes, it's feeding. You can see it's spinning here. This is so much fun. Let's do another one. Let's first check the radial runout. What? Why? I just discovered something a little bit suspicious. The whole setup is flexing a lot. If I'm just taking a bit of hand force, I'm not even doing much. That's 0 0.3 millimeters. And see, it doesn't even spring back to the right place. If I push a little bit, so if I pull hard, I can almost rock it a millimeter. Yeah, I can rock it a millimeter. I don't think this chunky setup is supposed to do that. So this is a tool that is used to put the chuck onto the machine. And I see that there's been a lot of whacking on this tool. So I'm guessing perhaps we didn't do that. I'm guessing now that we've actually not put the chuck on correctly. But this could be a typical beginner mistake that will prevent me from achieving really high uh, tolerances. Okay, Lucas is here and you, it looks like it wasn't really tight, right? It wasn't tight. But it couldn't fall off at least. Okay. And now, when we go close to the indicator. Oh, wow, what a difference. Okay, I can still push it like a... I can flex it a tenth of a millimeter if I put my whole body weight. The four yard chuck hadn't been used for 10 years, so there's, of course, some tramming in and trimming in of something like this. Now I'm making sure that it's really tight on there. Wow, what a difference. I almost can't move the meter anymore. Yes, not even a hundredth of a millimeter. If I put all I have, you can see a bit. And if I put on the plate, you can see a bit more, but not half a millimeter like before. However, this means I have lost my initial setup, which means I have to start over almost all the way from the beginning. But I understand much more about the lathe now, so we will do that. And the first thing we have to make sure is that the inner hole is straight. Turning the flywheel with the chuck not properly on was a huge mistake. So what I'm trying to do here is that I'm trying to rescue the situation by indicating the middle hole. And I actually shouldn't have had to do this at all. The plan from the beginning was to turn the ID, one face and the OD without changing the setup at all. That way I would have known that three of the four sides of the workpiece would be perfectly aligned with each other. But since the chuck was loose, I now have to re-indicate the center hole, which complicates things a lot. No matter how I really tried to do this, I couldn't actually get it really true again. But after a lot of fiddling with the dial indicator and measuring, I was kind of like, this is the best I can do. And then I turned the face and the OD once again. I'm doing another face cut to make a more homogeneous, good looking surface. It looks pretty nice. I've done all operations from this side. Time to turn the whole plate around. We don't have a crane here, but I have Hannes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Chuck, chuck. Wow. Awesome. Thank you. I have it dialed in as good as I get it right now. Time for the last face cut. Here we go. But when I was measuring how things went, it didn't look too promising. The best I could have done would be to return 
the center hole again. But as the hole was already big enough and I couldn't make it bigger for the taper bushing, that was not an option. So I basically redid everything with the best setup that I could do, but it was not finished in the way I was hoping to. That was the last cut and oh, how much I have learned. <laughs> this is not a really a beginner project, I think, on this machine with this four yaw chuck that hasn't been used for 10 years. In the beginning of the project, I had a problem getting the tool where I wanted, but then at the other half of the project, I realized that most of my problems were that the chuck and the work holding was not doing what I wanted. So after I fixed that, my results have become better. But the bad news is I already know this is not perfect. It's going to have some wobble, but to really see how much it will wobble, we have to put it on the prototype itself. So oh my. So the newel is on and it's better, but not perfect as I expected. If you look up here, you can see a little wave motion. So yeah, this is very disappointing, almost, yeah, it is exactly one millimeter. That's kind of bad. Let's check the other side. That one is a little bit better, 0 0.7 millimeters run out. So I mean, we made it five times better but I'm not happy anyway. SKF have told me that this shaft is undersized. They recommended 30 millimeter diameter of shaft instead of 20. And I can actually see already that the shaft is bent. So the last thing I will do is that I will try to shift this shaft over this way. Perhaps this portion of the shaft is a bit straighter and we can see what runout we have of the wheel in that case. Shaft is now moved. And the run out is worse. What is interesting is that changing the position of the shaft changed the run out, which means that the shaft is probably not completely straight and that the shaft is undersized for the application. But the real issue was that I machined this with a loose chuck. There's no way to get around that. But it's fine, it will do exactly what I needed to do for this prototype and it's been an amazing learning journey. The real issue I had is that I didn't have the workpiece rigidly clamped onto the machine. So I was chasing my own ghost, so to speak. The critical thing is to have it clamped on and then machine this ID, the face and the OD without touching anything. Then at least three sides of the wheel should be perfect and the last side should be pretty easy to get. I can't wait to re-weld the ID of the other half of the wheel and get a new chance of turning this straight. But I'm anticipating a few questions uh, in the comments on this video. So first of all, yes, I do know that a wheel like this needs to be balanced. 
balancing the wheel is actually not on the critical path to get the data I need. I can feel if the prototype is working or not with the wheel being as balanced or unbalanced as it is today. So that's more of a fun, interesting thing to have a professional come and balance it completely. We will probably do that, but it's not critical right now. Why am I letting this myself? Why am I not asking a professional? This is a prototype and part of the prototype project is for me to learn. After actually turning metal on the lathe myself, I will be a better designer to design pieces that are going to be turned because I do understand the operations and I do understand the limitations a little bit better. This is just how I work. I like to have kind of a basic understanding of something. And after that, I can kind of relate to the professionals who are doing this area. So for a real marble machine, full size, I'm not expecting to make any of the parts myself. I'm going to just uh, outsource that to professionals everywhere. The new wheel is five times better than the old wheel. And I think I can do this one five times better than the new wheel on my second chance. It's like Direst always say, you go to school on the first one and then you nail it on the second one. Thanks for watching day seven, eight and nine from the flywheel prototype build and see you tomorrow for day 10.